trailer has been released for <clears throat> Prince Harry's series with Oprah Winfrey on mental health. It features Lady Gaga, Glenn Close and Meghan, along with emotive footage of Harry standing by his father's side at his mother Diana's funeral. Now, the trailer's release comes just a month after the death of Harry's grandfather, Prince Philip, and days after he spoke about wanting to break the parenting cycle of genetic pain and suffering. So, is Harry putting fame before family? Joining us now is journalist and author Afia Adom, who says Han Harry is only interested in helping people, and Washington editor of The Spectator in the US, Amber Athey, who says Harry's timing could not be worse. Uh, let's come to you first, uh, Amber. Why do you feel that the timing is, is, is wrong? Is there ever a bad time to talk about mental health? Well, let me start by saying that although the UK is one of the top 10 exporters to the US, as an American, uh, in the words of former President Donald Trump, you all are not sending your best. Um, I would beg you, please take Prince Harry back. Uh, look, there is, oh, it's always a good thing to talk about mental health, but the problem is that Prince Harry is going about this entirely the wrong way. His podcast interview last week was a disaster. Look, it's, it's hardly ever a good time to air family grievances publicly. It's hardly ever healthy or productive. And this is especially bad timing, considering he's just recently repaired his rift with his brother William at the funeral for Prince Philip. And now he's essentially lobbed a grenade into that situation. And then, of course, there's the question of this effect on the Queen, um, who Prince Harry still uh, apparently loves very much, but she's obviously must still be devastated by the loss of her husband. And Prince Harry has chosen this time to attack him rather publicly well, okay. and attack his parenting um, skills. A Afia, um, Prince Harry says that it is very important to put his family first. But as Amber says, a number of people will think, well, where does your family start and, uh, and finish? Because he's putting his wife and his children first but not necessarily his father or his grandparents. Is that a legitimate criticism? I think it could be, but I also think that Harry needs to do what's best for him. And what's best for him at the moment is talking about his mental health and also helping others talk about their mental health as well. He's not the only person in this documentary. There's lots of other people talking about what they went through. And yes, he is grieving as well, but he has spoken recently about how he's trying to break that generational, generational cycle of parenting. And this is the way that he does that, by talking about what he went through. You know, Prince Charles did the same thing in our biography with Jonathan Dimbleby when he talked about um, the style of his parenting and how um, his parents made him feel lonely within his childhood. So this is not nothing new that we're hearing from the royal family. Prince Charles talked about it in that okay. book. So, this is okay, how Prince I Harry I, I, has yes. chosen to talk about it as well. Uh, you're right. In, in the Jonathan Dimbleby biography, um, the, there are details about how he uh, dealt with um, with his treatment at school and his parenting. But and one of Amber's points is it's about timing. And right now, the royal family is grieving. And so to bring attention to your own sort of personal uh, troubles, and although he says in the podcast, I don't want to point the finger, but then does seem to criticise the way he was brought up, that might feel like insensitive timing. There is no good time to talk about mental health. There's no good time to talk about grief. There's no perfect time to talk about any of these things. This is the time that he has chosen to do that. I'm sure there were some things in production before um, Prince Philip's death, and he chose to go, go ahead with them. I think what's more important and what we should be focusing on, that just after Mental Health Awareness Week here in the UK, and we're still in Mental Health Awareness Month in the United States, that we carry on these conversations about mental health, about mental health awareness, and about grief and about how it affects people and about how people can move forward and move through that. You know, in the documentary trailer, they've talked about dignity. They've also talked about the different words in which we use when people have talked about talking about their mental health. I think that's what we should be focusing on. And I think that's what's very, very important. You know, the filmmakers that are involved, Asif Kapadia and Don Portar, are experienced filmmakers working with um, Oprah and Prince Harry and lots of other people as well. It's not just about about him and it's not yeah. just about them. No, that's true, very, that's true, very but, of course, but of course there is a, an 
you know, he is from the most famous family in the world and therefore his profile sort of is bigger than anybody else's on the show. Amber, I, one of the things you said was quite cruel, I thought, about you're not exporting your best and, you, and you'd rather not have him. I feel very uncomfortable and I, you know, I'm a great defender of Prince Harry and Meghan, but I feel very uncomfortable when someone's very open about their mental health. I mean, in two minds here, because in a way, if you're going to be very public about it, you're obviously going to expect people to analyse what you're saying. But when you're very public about a vulnerability, for people then to be, to sort of pile in, feels, feels very uncomfortable. You don't feel uncomfortable, though, criticising him. Well, no, I don't think it's fair to speak about it publicly and then say that people aren't allowed to comment on it. And Prince Harry, unfortunately, has a very naive view of the media. Look, he says that he left the UK because he didn't like his, the treatment of him and his wife by the British tabloids. But he seems to think that the American media is going to be much better in the way that it treats him. And that's really just uh, not accurate. The American media is just as bloodthirsty, just as headline hungry, just as money centric as the British tabloids in many ways. And he's chosen to uproot his family and move them to Los Angeles, which is the, the center of the American paparazzi, who are the same people who helped drive Britney Spears to her infamous 2008 mental health breakdown. So for him to talk about mental health, but then approach it in this way seems very foolish. Look, I mean, I, I think it's nothing short of a disgrace the way that uh, Harry is treated. He is a man that's suffering from mental health. Any other person that would be talking about suffering from mental health, we would just accept that. This person is admitting they're suffering from mental health and he's trying to put that right. He's just trying to do something good. And he admits, if you listen to the documentary, if you listen to the, uh, the, the podcast, he admits that by talking about this, essentially I'm helping myself. I think it's a wonderful message. Why on earth should we knock somebody who's only trying to do something good? Who cares what you think about his attitude to the media? Who cares what you think about whether he lives in Hollywood or London? It doesn't matter. That has no relevance. In the end, he's got mental health issues and he's trying to help others. Amber, what is wrong with that? Well, the point about him moving from London to Los Angeles speaks to the basic hypocrisy on the issue because he routinely talks about trying to break this cycle of of uh, generational pain and parental pain, and yet his actions show that he's actually engaging in the opposite behavior that will lead for that cycle to continue. So no, that's no, the I, I, Look, let me, let me tell you what he said about that. He said, oh, you know, he said on Prince Charles, suddenly I started to piece it together and go, OK, so this is where he went to school. This is what happened. I know this about his life. I also know that it's connected to his parents, and that means he's treated me the way he was treated. So how can I change that for my own kids? I mean, I think about that about my own father and mother. We all do. We, if we go through life thinking we, we are different generations. How do we move on? What can we learn? from our parents. Now, if he's going to talk openly about mental health and encourage others, he, if he's, he can only be open and honest. Princess Diana did it. Here's a quote for you. Uh, I think when you've been through something traumatic in life, my mother dying when I was younger, your emotions come back in leaps and bounds because it's a different phase of life and there's no one here to kind of help you. And I definitely found it very, very hard at times. Overwhelming. No one to help you. That is from Prince William. We were not discussing whether Prince William should have said that. The implication, we could have taken that and going, how dare he say the royal family were not there to help him? Why is it one rule for Harry and another rule for William or for Diana? And when Charles was very honest about his experiences at school in the past as well? Adol, if I may, I think I think we know what the problem is when it comes to Prince Harry and when it comes to Meghan. Prince Harry could walk into a room and say hello and 50% of that room will find a problem with it. It's because he chose to do his own thing and go his own way and people just cannot stand it. So at this time when Prince Harry is actually trying to do some good, talk about the mental health issues that he has had and raise awareness for that, in this documentary that has lots of other stories in it. Of course, people are just going to find something wrong with it just because they can. Mm. Amber? Oh, I don't think that's accurate at all. I think people are merely critical of the way that Prince Harry has chosen to go about his mental health journey. He's thrown multiple family members of his under the bus and has really frayed that relationship. 
at this point beyond repair. And it's really interesting to watch all of this as he trades off of his royal titles to help get his wife a job at Disney or Netflix. It all feels like, as the title of this segment would suggest, he is putting fame over family. Oh, well, you could argue he's using his position to good use. Yeah. He's using his position to good use. And why shouldn't he, him and his wife benefit? They've got to earn a living, and the royal family do it all the time. Every other member of the royal family have either written books or have got tea and biscuits out in the, under their names. I mean, it happens. And also, I, do, I think this thing about the, the royal titles is a, is a bit of a red herring, because he's going to be royal. <laughs> Whether he's called a duke or a prince, everybody yeah. knows who he is. <laughs> he's not going to suddenly become anonymous just because he says he renounces his royal title. Absolutely. Uh, but Amber and Afia, thank you both very much. Your views, your polarised views, reflect the state of the nation right now yeah. on that particular issue.